So you guys all know Intel's 13th gen CPUs, and you know that they perform really well. The CPU market is really competitive right now. And with how good these 13th gen CPUs are, it surprised me when I saw this clip from Hardware Unboxed. Wasn't much need for more LJ1700 boards, but it seems like we're getting a refresh. 14th gen will be a refresh on this platform. Apparently these refresh CPUs could be quite power hungry. The real problem is with this Raptor Lake refresh is that it's on the same architecture. And with CPUs that are already looking like this at almost 300 watts, it starts to get scary what's coming next. Before we get into that, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Imagine being this guy. Couldn't be me. But you're like, Vex, how do I fix this when Big Corpo Microsoft is asking $200 to farm your data? Today's sponsor, SCD Key, you can get Windows 10 edition and upgrade it for free to Windows 11 for a low, low price. And once you get to checkout, make sure to use code Vex for an extra 25% off, then just choose your preferred payment method and you'll be emailed your code. I also have confirmation from SCD CD keys themselves that all of their keys are ethically sourced from OEM manufacturers. So that's something that you can trust. All links will be in the description. Make sure to use code VEX. Let's get back into it. So you guys may recall that Intel did a mini refresh on the 13900K called the 13900K S. What they basically did was charge almost another $500 for the little S in the title. And you're like, whoa, I paid $500 more, I should get great performance, but you really didn't. So here's the 13900K, and then here's the KS. It's definitely not worth double the price. 13900KS was basically just Intel trying to chase the absolute peak performance. They wanted to beat what AMD was offering, but this was before the X3D chips were even released. So I don't know why they chased it with the KS to try to gouge some people for getting these binned chips that are just better than the other 13900Ks that are out there. This gets us into the Raptor Lake refresh. I'm living under a rock or something because obviously we already knew these were coming. But here is Intel's roadmap and on the consumer K-series chips, there is a Raptor Lake refresh for everything. As it says, coming quarter three, 2023. As you can see on this article from WCCF Tech, which I think a lot of the information is sourced by Moore's Law is dead. So shout out to Moore's Law is dead for this info. It seems like there's they're trying to chase clock speeds. It's said, said to boost up to 6.2 gigahertz. For reference, the 13900KS did clock up to six gigahertz. So their goal is to clock even higher than what they've offered with Raptor Lake. The Raptor Lake can already clock really high. That is its biggest advantage over AMD's Ryzen offerings. But what scares me is that clock speeds are almost directly related with how much power your CPU draws. It's already guzzling back 300 watts. How much further can we push this thing? Yeah, that's not technically what it's gonna be under a gaming load. For even productivity, that is a lot of, how do you cool 300 watts on a CPU? And that's not to say that AMD is literally that much far behind. This 7950X is at 250 watts. Are we gonna be seeing like a 350 watt CPU or something like that? Yeah, it's gonna be faster, but at what cost? These Intel CPUs are already some of the least efficient chips to, to ever release. I bet you're wondering, it's like, how do you know that they're gonna draw more power? It's like, I can almost guarantee it. There are motherboards being made that already have beefed up VRMs, which means that they're going to draw more power because VRMs provide the power to these CPUs. And what concerns me is that if these are going to be marketed as gaming CPUs, like, why pump so much power into something? It's like brute forcing it just to get a few more frames in games when not that many games are even CPU limited because this is an RTX 4090 at 1080p. That is a scenario that almost never comes up. So if you even have a modern CPU, you're probably not going to be CPU limited. Uh, even some of the best coolers on the market can't handle these CPUs right now. And even then, they throttle. You could pay as much money as you want and you still don't get the performance you're paying for. I hear you. I hear you. There's like, there is one other way of looking at why this refresh exists. It could be to introduce some new SKUs, offer a better value for money. So there's a six plus eight core. So that's six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. There's gonna be a two plus eight 
core configuration. Just an idea of where these are going to slot in, I went to the Wikipedia article for Raptor Lake. Just ignore all these numbers and stuff. They're not important to this conversation right now. So basically, there's going to be a CPU that's a 2 plus 8 core. That would probably slot in maybe around an i3 above or below, depending on how it performs. Um, i3 is at four cores right now and eight threads, which makes some decent gaming CPUs. So I don't know how two performance cores and then eight efficiency cores would be in gaming. It might not be a gaming CPU, more, it might be more of a productivity CPU. So usually games don't use those efficiency cores or use them that well. But what is more interesting is possibly the six plus eight configuration here. So that means on this list, with efficiency cores being in this stack, that that's going to slot in above an i5, so six performance cores, not four efficiency cores, but not eight either, around the mid tier of i5. So depending on how these go to name, this might end up being one of the really good bang for your buck CPUs, depending on how much extra like performance those two extra efficiency cores give you. They might be really nice. Now, something I can complain about Intel with is like, man, there's already so many CPU SKUs. Like, dude, and they're gonna do a refresh with even more? I'm not gonna lie, just like as a consumer, kinda hard to keep track of all that stuff. Hopefully they can clear this up a little bit and distinctly name them. On top of that, this Raptor Lake refresh is going to draw even more power. I kinda think this is a bad move on Intel's part, and I think they're just trying to keep up with how AMD re releases their CPUs, because AMD release first their their x cpus and then they release their x3d um but maybe intel is a little insecure of this market or something like that what intel really needs to work on is their power efficiency because when are they going to hit the ceiling where they can't push power anymore even the 13700k these cpus are hitting the max already because cpu coolers can't handle it it's funny that gpus we can have 450 watt 4090s and they are fine actually the the gpu chills at like 60 degrees most of the time it's like fans are barely running so yeah we seem to be entering a new age of cpus where i'm scared that we're hitting kind of like a hard limit where we just keep throwing power at the problem in order to try to solve things i don't think that's sustainable for the long term. Now the only ones that do look promising is the X3D chips, but those only really perform better in gaming. And on the flip side, it's also funny because Intel's throwing all this power at these chips to make them as fast as possible and to run up the marketing basically to say that they can achieve these things and then most people can't sustain that power anyways so they have to undervolt it or their cpu throttles constantly and they never get that advertised performance because getting the cooling solution to make that happen is ridiculously expensive in some cases just not doable given the the hardware configuration let me know what you think about the raptor like refresh I don't think it's that good of an idea. I really think that Intel should just wait until they launch Meteor Lake, which is their next 14th gen CPUs, which are going to have significantly improved integrated graphics and that they might be more power efficient. Who really knows? I don't know. I'm just scared of Intel's power consumption right now. My 5900X is pretty good at the moment, not gonna lie. So hopefully you guys have a good day. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.